What's up, guys? My name is Evan Tracy. I'm a junior boarder from Vashon Island, Washington. And my name is Bobby Welsh, and I am a senior boarding student from Roanoke, Virginia. And, and this is Tornado Talk. Talk. Here we go. Today on the podcast, we have a senior boarding student who happens to hail from Montana State. And he is also an avid photographer. Something we don't have on here that I've also seen is he is an incredible pool player. Ooh. We have oh, yeah. Sean Huss. Yes, sir. What's up, Sean? All right, Sean. So we're going to open it up with a quick game called Quick Fire. Do you happen to know how the rules of that game work? Uh, No. Give give me a reminder. Yeah, so we are going to give you a set of questions, and you cannot think. um, There will be severe consequences if you think. Um, (laughs) And you have to give us your first answer. All right, Evan, will start us off. All right, are you ready? I'm starting three, two, one. Favorite dining hall dish? Coconut curry chicken. Oh my gosh, that is an incredible answer. Bobby, that's okay. go to Christmas song. Ooh, um, gosh, I don't even, I don't know really. Uh, Jingle Bells, probably. Uh, uh, if you could live anywhere, where would you live? Ooh, if I could live anywhere, where would I live? The Macaulay School. <laughs> <laughs> probably somewhere in Alaska. Oh, oh that's valid. so valid. Uh, favorite shopping store? Favorite shopping store? Gotta be Walmart. Walmart's no, a <laughs> You can buy anything there, right? Best piece of topping. Best pizza, pepperoni. Okay, yeah. Boom. So, okay, hey, back to the Christmas. Song. Dude, how much money does Mariah Carey make every December, bro? <laughs> Seven <laughs> million dude, dollars. After, dude, that check starts rolling in after Halloween, bro. Surely. I mean, <laughs> but pre Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's unbelievable. Check just, yeah, yeah, check just starts rolling, dude. If only. If only. Dude, I wonder if, like, her royalties will be passed down. But, I mean, she has enough, like, money already. But, like, do you think the royalties would be passed down to her kids or not? Oh, surely. Yeah, I don't right. know. I don't know the, the album. Legacy the legacy she leaves behind. The album has to. All right. We, we're, hey, we're, we're, we're getting too right, sidetracked. Right. Okay, Sean. <laughs> you are from Montana. Montana is a very beautiful state. I'm from the West Coast as well. I can speak a little bit about West Coast, best coast. Anyways, yes, what sir. is it like in Montana? And what are some differences you would say about the natural life uh, in Tennessee or even on the Macaulay campus compared to what was it? What was the town you from? Twin Bridges in Montana. Shout yeah. out Twin Bridges. Are there <laughs> two bridges? There, There's two bridges within like 10 miles of it. I don't uh, know why it's go. called there Twin you go. Bridges. Very it's, cool. Yeah, it's a little weird. But, but what's that like? I mean, I don't know. The main, the main difference that I... That comes to mind for me is just the like the disparity and like distance to people and mm-hmm. like ease of access to like groceries and just things that we think of here as like everyday things. It's like, oh, if I want to go to Walmart, easy. Five minute drive. Yeah. Like I can just go to Brainerd right there. In Montana, I mean it's 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 that isn't the case. And it's also not the case that like I could just go, I'm gonna go walk over to my friend's house or something. Yeah. <laughs> because your friend could live like <laughs> twenty minutes away yeah. and still go to the same school. Absolutely. And so it's like there's like a physical distance between things that makes it a little, I don't know. I feel like it can make it a little more meaningful, those interactions yeah, that you get with people absolutely. simply because it's harder to yeah. get to them physically. Right. Absolutely. I mean, um, you said you could, you would live in Alaska, right? I mean, yeah, it's yeah. very similar. The, uh-huh. s- the school buses got to be so fast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they're supercharged or something. Do they actually, there's some pretty cool school buses out there that have like chains that auto deploy and stuff. I've seen, sorry, yeah, I'm getting like a little the, nerdy. The zombie apocalypse school no, bus. No, exactly. <laughs> um, you said there were like, how, how many people were in the town again? In Twin Bridges, Montana, as of the 2020 census, there were 343 people. Oh, it's booming. Yeah. It's booming. Dude, that's that's yeah. up. The nightlife is awesome. Oh, yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it turns up. It's now, <laughs> okay, so but continuing on, on Montana, I follow an Instagram page called Hipsters of Bozeman. And yeah. there's a lot of like Californians and whatever just oh, like yeah. coming 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 on to like, actually, it was recommended by Bart Wallen. Also, Duke Ritchie follows it. Um, are there any hipsters of Twin Bridges or is it like small enough. Any Californias no moving in? California? No, not really. Okay. When it, I mean, there's a lot of people moving in from, like, I mean, all the states are declining in population. Like, California, yeah, Washington, yeah, yeah. Texas, people are just gotcha. moving away from those, and so yeah. we get a lot of Californians, a lot of Washington uh, folks, but LFT. in Twin Bridges, <laughs> not really. No, they usually flock to the cities. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you come from a state where it's so populated that you always have that ease of access, so mm-hmm. it's a hard thing to lose for a mm-hmm. lot of people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, that's a Montana is a far away, uh, a far away state. Uh, how did you hear about Macaulay and um, why did, why did you come? Yeah. So I actually got contacted by the one and only David Hughes. One and only. 
I know. No, he can't <laughs> be beat. Out. He cannot be beat. Yeah. And so via I carrier can... pigeon or via. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he reached out to my mom yeah. after she had been uh, putting me in applications for just like some general scholarship mm-hmm. yeah. organizations. And he was like, you want to try out CLC? And I went. Send it. Was there with Bobby. That Love was CLC. an amazing Dude, CLC experience. Was lit. CLC yes. was so fun. Amazing. Can you talk a little bit about CLC? Because I, I never went. And for those of you back home, we don't know what CLC yeah, is. It is. Character. Leadership. And community. Yeah. Let's and go. so basically, it's like a two-week thing where you've got guys coming from all over the country. Well, I think it's like a two dozen-ish. Yeah, 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 more yeah. or less, two dozen guys are going to come. Summer. They're going to stay in the dorm. They're going to have two weeks centered around activities that basically just help you get closer with the other guys yeah, there everything dude. and service yeah. yeah we went to an atlanta uh soccer game yeah yeah and they they yeah. destroyed and then yeah. we also went whitewater raft caving game. yeah dude, it was sick it was amazing yeah it was so cool and we also like we painted a school mm-hmm. we not the whole school we only did a couple a little bit but yeah and we did you muck the pond yes dude, that was awesome i never I did that mucking that. the pond they pulled like 80 Freaking tons of yeah. like <laughs> just algae out of the pond. There's a mountain of algae. The, the pictures were crazy. Sounds like you guys like are a, just doing chores. It was just, like a, it was just <laughs> a mound, work. dude. It was yeah. crazy. It was, we did, oh, it was awesome. Widows harvest and stuff too, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that is sweet. Yeah, my, I mean, my sure. roommate um, Alex Hyde back home. Cool. He went to CLC and he talks a lot about it. You know, like a lot of guys who go to CLC end up at Macaulay. So yeah. mm-hmm. that's yeah, just absolutely. something I've been curious about because it. You know, I'd never heard of it. And when I showed up, everyone was like, yeah, I went to CLC. No big. <laughs> yeah, you know? Everyone was like, yeah, what is this community that I'm not in? Um, And we had some great, great, like, uh, counselors. Pi Eager, oh, Diane Wynn, Spencer. Mm-hmm. No, maybe not Spencer, but Kelly. But, yeah, great guys, great guys. Yeah. Um, guys. Now, Sean, moving, shifting gears um, to photography. Can yeah. you tell us about that? And can you tell us? You know, how often do you do it now? Do you still, are you still an avid photographer? And, and when did that start for you? Yeah, so I, that probably started for me, must have been seventh, eighth grade year, somewhere yeah. in between there. Still, that, still in Montana. Yeah, n- actually, at the time, we were in Michigan. So oh, okay. I, I lived in Montana for seven years before this little stint in Michigan, and yeah, then yeah. we moved back. Okay. Where'd you grow up in Michigan? How was that? Uh, so yeah, I, I, uh, the northern part of the lower half okay. of Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, almost center. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, no, no, yeah. And we were like right, not on, but like you could walk to Lake Huron in oh. like five minutes. Oh, that's hmm. beautiful. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It was definitely a change of pace from Montana with like the landscape going from mountains to water. But I mean, Absolutely. it was really cool. Oh. And so I got into it around that time. I got given this small little digital camera mm-hmm. from I don't know, must have been an old one of my mom's or something. Yeah, yeah. And I just started shooting around. Like I would go out to the uh, the wilderness area over there, and I would just walk around. That's how pictures. it starts, doesn't it? That's how it started for uh, me, too. That yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I would usually I was just go landscapes and maybe a little bit of wildlife here. And mm-hmm. then in the past two, two and a half years, I've leaned more towards wildlife. I mean, mm-hmm. that's yeah. been a lot easier being in Montana. I mean, I yeah, have absolutely. a great opportunity there. You know, I, I overheard a conversation. Um, actually, when I went to ask Sean if he would like to come on to Tornado Talk, I kind of just like ran up to him super awkwardly i was like <laughs> hello re- i was like hey what are you doing tomorrow night at 8 <laughs> 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 and, and it, i i overheard his conversation previously about um i think you guys were talking about what you would do maybe it was before college or after college about going out like your dream would be like uh taking photos of a nature. could you tell us what that was because i was really interested I, I was totally eavesdropping but i, w- I was yeah, like oh that sounds yeah. cool yeah I, so we were talking about i mean we talk about this pretty often because uh it's it's i don't know it's just been a theme lately in our thinking and so we were talking about if we took a gap year after undergrad so we just go mm-hmm. to we go to college for four years and then we just take a gap year in between then and graduate school where we'd go to graduate school yeah and we were talking that in that specific instance we were talking about uh hitchhiking in <laughs> eastern mm-hmm. europe oh my oh, god oh yeah super yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's great yeah, just, <laughs> just, know, stu- yeah. just the stuff that just you know the, yeah, the casual day-to-day yeah, day yeah, day combos yeah and so i uh, yeah i think that it would be really cool if to take a gap year and go off and travel and get to see like new parts of the world. And yeah. I mean, a photography would definitely be an element Absolutely. of that for me. Absolutely. Because I mean, East, even in that specific example, Eastern Europe, it's like they have the Carpathian, I believe, mountains. Yeah. And those are, it's, it's beautiful country. Yeah. And so I think that that would be a really cool thing to just get some experiences under your belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not Absolutely. have that conflict with college necessarily. Absolutely. I think it'd be amazing. Now, 
speaking of college and speaking of that transition, so mm. is photography something you want to pursue professionally? Um, I would consider it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm not like dead set on anything for a career. I know that yeah. I want to go to college yeah. and study this, but I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily know where that's going to take me career wise. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to let it take me where it does. Mm-hmm. But if, if I had the opportunity to become a professional photographer and that be my source of income, I Dude, would probably take, take it, it in an instant. Yes. Yeah. That's, I look at those like Nat Geo guys and they're yeah. just all yeah. living yeah. life. Yeah, but that's like the 1%. Yeah. yeah that is true. <laughs> that's that's true. Gotta, you got to be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean, I'm sure you're great. Are you, um, so, I mean, on that note of colleges as well, are you, I mean, you're a senior, right? You're applying. Mm-hmm. What's that look like this year? A little stressful, I imagine. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I today actually is the deadline for my ED going to Wesleyan, Middletown, mm-hmm. Connecticut, okay, okay. small liberal arts college. And I mean, really, the, the only aspect that I was looking for in colleges is open curriculum. Mm-hmm. That's, okay. that's this uh, curriculum style where as opposed to having some core classes that you're going to take, like English, math, foreign language, etc., you don't have any of those. You mm-hmm. design and your own kind of? You're on your own. Wow. You're given an yeah. academic advisor, but... In general, you can take whatever you want. You can explore or you can really focus in on something and not have to deal with other stuff. And I think that that can be a really valuable thing Mm. because it allows for the exploration, but then you can also narrow down and really focus on what you want to do once you've explored. That's Business. Cool. <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> no, that's, cool. It sounds like you're very adventure oriented. But that the, is you know, cool. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Go travel out to Eastern Europe. That sounds <laughs> but, awesome. But it's good to have an academic advisor make sure you're like yeah. getting stuff done. Yeah. So Locked cool. in that's a little cool. bit. Um, so kind of thrown back to twin bridges, right? Okay. Um, previously before this episode, we talked a little bit about the amount of siblings you had. You want to tell everyone back home how many siblings you have? I have five siblings. So hmm. pretty big That's family. Pretty what, what was it like growing up in a family? Of, I mean, six, including yourself, right? Yeah. Six, including myself. And I mean, the youngest is <laughs> not even two. So oh, wow. we've, we've got a range of like 15 years. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was always, I never was at a loss of companionship. Yeah. No, like yeah, absolutely. I, there was always, sure there was always a sibling uh-huh. to hang out with something to do, you know? Yeah. And that's cool. And I don't know. I, it was, it was really nice in the first few years with um, my little sister and little brothers being able to, I mean, be at home with them, go to the same school and stuff. And uh, that, I, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the shift to Macaulay has made that it, it's made those breaks where I get to see them all the more meaningful. Yeah, Absolutely. because I mean, when you know your time is limited with someone, you treat mm-hmm. it as such. And Absolutely. That, I feel like that just makes the connections. Uh, th- it makes them more easy to make deep connections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Are they all younger than you? Yeah. So I'm the oldest. I have <laughs> sisters, 15 uh, brothers who are 10 and 11, and then two younger sisters who are six and almost two. Ernie wow. younger brothers looking at coming to Macaulay? Are they all I hanging did, out well, in Twin, twin Bridges, <laughs> baby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd take the opportunity where they, where they'd be given it. Yeah. They, they, on, he's kind of on and off about it, the old mm-hmm. 11-year-old, but I'd love to see him end up here. Man, that's awesome. You think, yeah. I mean, based on your experience, um, you, you, would, you would like your brother to come here as well? Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Big big fa- M family Let's kind of. Yeah. Say. You, you went from a large family to an even larger family kind of. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, we want to close right. it out with a little guess yeah, that teacher. So we've got another game for you. Um, it's okay. it's very fun. Um, we got so we we've got um <laughs> we've got we got a teacher here. You cannot know them, but you do have an opportunity to guess them based on these incredible hints. That will okay. be it'll be so easy to guess this teacher. So hopefully. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of obscure hints, but uh, good hints. They're incre- it's incredible stuff. I'm looking at. It. Holy smokes, Bobby! Um, you take it away. <laughs> all right, sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, so first guess, or sorry. Oh my gosh, Mr. Roberts, cut that, please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was yapping on. All right, first hint. This teacher is a male. Ooh. All right. This teacher has finished a 100 mile ultra marathon in Alabama. It's the Pinhoti 100. He's, he's got a sweet belt buckle for it too, dude. It's so sick. Yes, All sir. Right. Um, next one. Almost lost a kidney in a skateboarding accident at age 35. <laughs> so who <laughs> skateboards at 35, bro? <laughs> Favorite color green. Tony Hawk, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. He breaks horses and actually has some land on lookout. And driven to the Grand Canyon, 
ran it from South Rim to North Rim and back, then drove back only eating McDonald's from Jackson, Mississippi. So he drove from Jackson, Mississippi to the north to the Grand Canyon, ran it with some buddies in a day, took him sixteen hours, ran from the South Rim to the North Rim and back, drove home. They were only fueled at McDonald's. That's incredible. Like literally all straight, bro. Like, I don't know why you would do that. Um, okay. Just um, like send it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when he, and then, so he was a student here um, and he lived in North Hutch, South Hutch, Belk and Founders. So he was all over the place. Rambling man. This is kind of difficult. If you would like us to repeat any of the hints, we got you. He was a boarder and he breaks horses. Gosh. Um, he breaks horses now. Yeah, and, and I don't know then, how long he's been breaking horses. He's kind of a beast. He is a beast. Breaking horses, it, Mr. Hubbard? Nope. nope. Close. That would be my guess. Close. Mr. That's Mr. fair, Hubbard. though. Yeah, the breaking horses. Yeah. I don't, oh I'll give you another hint. Um, he happens to be hosting a spring trip to your home state. Oh, Mr. Adams. Dude, that was why did you give that throw? <laughs> so did I throw? Oh no! Oh, oh sorry, geez, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, hey, everyone's a winner on the there podcast. Go. All right, <laughs> Sean got but, it. Dude, some of this stuff is crazy. I did not know. First of all, I didn't know he skateboarded. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, no way. I had no idea. I didn't know he almost lost his kid. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> That's um, insane. And his favorite color is green. That's what I was wondering. The, I, um, I got to hear about that story. Drove to the Grand Canyon, ran it. All the way back and forth. Dude, yeah, and like you just, just run down in there and just run up. Dude, that's so crazy. I didn't bro. even know he was like an ultra runner like that. Dang. That's so awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to head out to Montana. I'm sorry. Crazy segue, by the way. Another side <laughs> quest. You go to Montana? So I'm going on that ranching trip to yeah. Montana. He's paying, um, he's paying to work. I am. Pop. Such it's a tourist. It's experience, right, man. Sure. <laughs> Call me a California. No baby. Hey, he's gonna, sure gonna love me out baby. there, right? Yeah. He's gonna come New back talking like this, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hardcore rancher. No baby. I can rope. No, but um, I'm really excited. You know, like my, I, I mean, the West Coast is beautiful. Absolutely. I've been yeah, to Montana man. a handful of times. I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I've driven through it. Um, so. You know, I've just been really excited about that. So I, I was a little jealous when, I, you know, I, I figured out that you live there, which I think I asked you a couple of times, like, oh, man, how do you feel about Montana? Just because I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a little jealous. And well, speaking about Montana, uh, we obviously know very little. Uh, if there was one thing about Montana that you could or, or one experience that you could describe from back home, what would it be? Because I feel like there's a lot of people like we were talking about in Bozeman, like there's so many people moving there from like other places. That like there's this Yellowstone view that everybody has, and what like what's what's it really like? Gosh, um, cool. I don't know if I can. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if I can point to a yeah. specific experience, but I mean, it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying uh, at the beginning. Is like there's this like physical separation of everything, mm -hmm. and yeah, I feel like that almost it almost makes it easier to appreciate. Not only, as I mentioned earlier, like the time that you have with people and mm -hmm. and such, but it also the, the the physical disparity just makes it easier to appreciate the the physical beauty that's there, Absolutely. like the, all the mountains and the landscape Absolutely. and the scenery. Huh. I mean, like that, it's really easy to look there and recognize. I mean, you can see all these people are moving here, and it's like, oh, I live here. I I get to see this. So like I can walk out of my backyard and I can see this amazing scenery. It's like mm -hmm. not many people in the world get to do that ever, much yeah. less like waking up every day and just walking yeah. out and seeing that. Absolutely. And so it's really, it just makes you appreciate nature more. I would say mm -hmm. because that's that's a that's a, yeah Very it's deep. definitely there's an, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I know absolutely. <laughs> it's just an element of gratitude that you form towards the. Being able to experience those things, yeah. yeah, I can only. How are the stars? Oh, dude, they're amazing. Dude. I've, yeah, I have pictures only, of. Yeah. Oh, it's insane. I, I've only experienced like only like I was at like a KOA in Utah with my parents, and like that was the crazy. That was the first time I saw a shooting star too. But like, oh, dude, really? the, yeah, the star because like you can't see anything here. Like, yeah, the you can see like so a yeah. total of maybe like ten percent. The yeah. little dipper. Oh my gosh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, everyone always points that out. Thinks they're like crazy at constellation. You know, I'm a avid astronomer. Astronomer. <laughs> Obviously not, bro. There we go. Astrologist. Astro <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, anyways, to close us out, Sean, you've been a wonderful guest. What is one piece of advice you would offer to someone like your little brother who's 11 who might be considering coming to Macaulay or a freshman who's at Macaulay now? What would you offer them? My advice to someone who's considering it would be to take the offer. Come here. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot at least. I mean, it's an amazing place, and if you give it, if you let it 
it will take you amazing places. It mm. tr- like it really will. True. The connections you can make here, the people you can meet, not only on in the faculty realm, but also students. Mm-hmm. There's a, a lot of amazing people here. Yeah, and absolutely. if you give yourself the opportunity to embrace that, it'll be really easy to do so. And I agree. to underclassmen, I, it's kind of a cliche, but I'd say don't be afraid to ask questions. And I actually be like, I'd probably encourage them to, to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's really important, especially with the uh, pace at which we have technolo- technology developing in the modern world, that we ask questions. And I mean, we're a part of the generation that's going to shape the future in that realm. I think mm-hmm. it's really, really important that people keep asking questions about those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like, like you, you did say cliche, but that's a definitely a different kind of facet of that. And I, yeah. I absolutely agree. Yeah, that's that's something. Uh, if you ever took AP Chemistry, Mr. Shoemate's always like pushing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I've, that is a difficult class. <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna lie best to you. of luck to you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's it's really meaningful. I absolutely agree with that statement. So, yeah. Sean, you've been a wonderful guest. Thank you for coming Thank out. Thank you so much for I coming had on. Some wonderful and, um, hosts. Join if us. You, if you oh. didn't notice last episode, uh, we used an interesting word. Uh, to, 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 okay, Mr. Roberts, cut this again. I'm sorry. Pause for 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> what word did we use? Hootenanny. Yeah. If you were with us last week, we closed it out with an interesting word. I believe it was hootenanny, which is an informal gathering to play folk music. So we will continue this trend and join us next week for some hobnob. If you do not know the definition of hobnob, it is defined as as in to travel, to come to be together as friends. These two have been <laughs> hobnobbing together since freshman year. There we go, baby. There we go. Thank next you, next thank time, you, Sean. Hobnob. And thank you, Akil. This is this is a great script. Uh, and thank you to all our guys behind the scenes. Uh, Absolutely. I was Shout back out. there for two years, and it's good to be recognized. So yeah. we appreciate y'all so Just much. Thank you all. Absolutely. Thank all you right. so much. And follow us on Instagram. Watch the YouTube. We have beautiful faces. Um, <laughs> so you should watch. See ya.